A voice from the room where it happens on U.S.-China trade. Marketplace Morning Report is supported by C3 Generative AI. Verified, traceable answers, secure, hallucination-free, LLM agnostic, IP liability-free. C3.AI. This is Enterprise AI. And by Viking, exploring the world in comfort. With a fleet of small ships, Viking offers travel experiences for the thinking person. Discover more at Viking.com. I'm David Brancaccio in New York. First, dock workers from Maine to Texas are now on strike, immobilizing shipments of things like fresh food, cars, machinery. Marketplace's Nancy Marshall Genzer has an update. The dock workers, represented by the International Longshoremen's Association, reportedly won a 77% raise over six years. They also want to keep their jobs of loading and unloading ships from being automated. United States Maritime Alliance represents the port operators. It says it's offered to increase wages by almost 50% and keep current language on automation in the contract. Oxford Economics estimates the strike will lower GDP by four and a half to seven and a half billion dollars a week. Oxford says for every week the strike continues, it'll take a month to clear up the backlog. I'm Nancy Marshall Genser for Marketplace. CVS, which went from pharmacy chain to pharmacies plus health insurer, drug benefits manager, and an operator of clinics, is considering breaking itself up, according to multiple published reports this morning. The news comes as the company has struggled in particular with its Medicare Advantage business. Marketplace's Nova Safo has more. CVS gobbled up healthcare businesses with a plan to reduce costs and improve profit margins. But investors are now pressuring for change after the company repeatedly lowered profit forecasts as its health insurance business struggles. A hedge fund investor reportedly met with CVS executives yesterday and the company announced layoffs. Executives are apparently also considering splitting up CVS. Generally, breakups allow companies to unload underperforming assets. And for CVS right now, that's largely its Medicare Advantage business. Subscriptions are up, utilization is up, profits are down, in part because regulators are rejecting premium increases. I'm Novasafa for Marketplace. Markets, S&P futures are unchanged at the moment. NASDAQ futures are up two-tenths of a percent. Crude oil is down half a percent this morning, under $68 a barrel, pretty close to its low of the year. Marketplace Morning Report is supported by Progressive. Progressive Commercial Insurance protects small businesses from retailers to tradespeople. Progressive covers a variety of business needs with a range of coverages. More at ProgressiveCommercial.com. And by Amazon Business, focused on offering smart business buying solutions, leaving time to focus on growth. More at AmazonBusiness.com. And by JLL, helping businesses achieve ROI of up to 175% in energy efficiency spaces jll.com jll see a brighter way despite ongoing economic and geopolitical tensions the u.s and china get together every few months for talks about the mechanics of the economic relationship the economic working group started convening about a year ago and covers everything from climate investment to financing debt of lower income countries to monetary policy and trade trade and trade that's especially front of mind as the Biden administration has both maintained trump era tariffs and added more of its own this working group met just over a week ago and leading the u.s side was jay shambaugh undersecretary for international affairs at the u.s treasury department he spoke with my colleague sabri benishore so you led this most recent economic working group meeting what were your overall takeaways like how would you characterize the current economic relationship between the u.s and china we're trying to keep it stable. We're trying to, in some sense, responsibly manage it. We're the world's largest economies, and it's really important that we're able to talk to one another. In in part, just frankly, sometimes it's useful to understand what's going on in each other's economy because that has spillovers on each of us. But also because of the overall nature of our relationship, sometimes we're taking actions that you know from our perspective are about national security but they often have spillovers into economics or they're being done with economic tools and so it's really important to be able to talk about those things and explain the intent behind them explain the way in which they're narrowly targeted and make sure that we don't get into some sort of escalatory cycle that we can understand each other's motivations and understand the impacts of our policies well just Within this past week, many of the new tariffs on Chinese imports that were first announced back in May went into effect. These are on things like Chinese-made electric vehicles, EV batteries, steel, aluminum. 
Why are those necessary? The tariffs are intended to try to change China's behavior. So there was this thing called a four-year review. You look to see if they're working. And the general judgment was that China was not yet changing its behavior. And so you can change the tariffs a little bit to see if that will help. And when we did so, one of the decisions was to try to be very strategic in how you do so and to aim any new tariffs at specifically at areas where we think they're critical industries that we want to make sure that the United States has some stake in. And also, frankly, where we see a lot of subsidies and non-market practices in China that we think might be distorting the global arrangement of who's producing what. And so we're trying to push back against that. From our perspective, they were quite narrowly targeted. They were about 4% of our trade. So this was not like a sea change in the relationship or a massive spillover to the U.S. economy. It was much more about trying to target specific industries. How has China received all of this? And I ask because usually China's response has been, you know, national security is an excuse. The U.S. is just trying to keep us down. Yeah, so on, on this one, what I would say is, and I'm not going to dispute that characterization, that's certainly, we hear that sometimes, uh, they don't like the tariffs, that's certainly true. In this case, we, we actually try to be very clear, we're not claiming these are purely national security, this is the economic action where we think they have policies and practices that are distorting where things are being produced, we're trying to get them to change that, we're trying to push back against that. They don't like it. They also understand, though, that what we did here was narrowly targeted. I think they were worried when they heard a review was going on that we might do something massive that would change everything in the economic relationship. And I think once we were able to explain to them what we were doing and why, I, I would say that they had a more nuanced understanding of what we were doing. And so you hadn't seen some sort of huge escalation or retaliation. Jay Shambaugh is Undersecretary for International Affairs at the U.S. Treasury Department, and he co-leads the Economic Working Group between the U.S. and China. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Marketplace's Sabri Benishore there. You're listening to the Marketplace Morning Report. From APM, American Public Media.